What's going on guys? Ronan here, and I'm back with part 6 of What If Ash Won the Sinnoh League. The last part seemed to be really well received with all of you, and I really appreciate it. Now, this part isn't going to be as long as the last one, but I do promise you there are many important details that will take place in this one. And some questioning of virtues. So anyway, I hope you enjoy. Now let's get in to this next part. Welcome back, everyone. We got a lot to cover today, so let's get into the next stop on the journey of Ash winning the Sinnoh League, which just so happens to be the Grand Festival, a topic completely about Dawn. We find ourselves back on the banks of Lake Valor in the episode Last Call, First Round, where the Grand Festival is being held with the coordinators meet and greet. Ashton and Brock have made it with time to spare after their last minute win at the Battle Hall. After Brock flexes his very disturbing urges towards some of the other d participants, we get a good look at the tough competition competition that Don has ahead of her. Nando, Zoe, Jesse, Kenny, Ursula are all here, plus many others that Don has never seen. After some tense moments and catching up with her more friendly rivals, Don spends the night psyching up her Pokemon, getting them ready mentally for the road ahead, pulling out her first ribbon that her mother ever won. Don tells her Pokemon they will honor it with a victory here at the Grand Festival. Now, a few things we need to change here. Ash would be working with Gibble to master Draco Meteor here, but since Garchomp is off training with the Air Battle Master, I think we could have another round of Septile Monferno training with it mastering level 3 of Blaze before finally collapsing from exhaustion. This is where we'll have a brief moment of Dawn freaking out because she doesn't know how to accessorize for the event, and Brock has no clue either. Once she gets some much needed advice from Zoe, she's able to move on to the next day and the performance rounds of the Grand Festival. The first rounds go very well for all of the heavy hitters, with each of them securing their spot in the top 32. That is, until we get to Kenny, one of the odds on favorites to win the competition. Unfortunately, he's developed a bit of an arrogant side, and it shows as he calls for his big move and it's extremely unpolished looking downright lazy if i'm being honest it ends up costing him when flotso can't handle its side of the performance botching its part of the act this leads us to the point to the chosen top 32 everyone we expect to see there is present except for one kenny his unpolished presentation cost him the cut to someone who is less skilled than him it's a heavy blow and a real sobering reminder to not only kenny but everyone who knows him there's no room for error in this event one slip up could cost you everything the episode ends with kenny leaving to lick his wounds in an attempt to challenge another grand festival off in another region and learn from his mistakes. Dawn looks on as her oldest childhood friend taught her one last valuable lesson before the battle rounds. Stay humble or face the consequences. With that, we now enter the next episode, Opposites Interact. Now this episode starts off harmless enough with Dawn training with her Pokemon while Ash is training with his. Another Sceptile and Monferno moment. Then it comes time for the first round and Dawn gets mashed up against her biggest hater, Ursaluna. I mean, Ursula. Man, I've been playing way too much Legends Arceus lately. Anyway, this battle goes down the same as in the enemy. Dawn takes an early lead due to Ursaluna's overconfidence, but it's this same overconfidence that allows her to easily take back the lead and create a huge separation in the points. Ursaluna doesn't even give Dawn a chance to display her abilities. It even gets to the point that the only way Dawn could win is with a double knockout. Then, in what I have to call as a pure Ash catch a moment, Dawn uses her opponent's own dig against her, when her Pachirisu uses it for cover to avoid any oncoming attacks to form her newest move, the Ice Chandelier. With a little extra boost from a hidden power, Pachirisu delivers what essentially is an ice rollout to both Gabon Bite and Flareon, knocking them both out with 7 seconds left on the clock. This battle was close, and she almost fell prey to the problems that plagued her in the past, but her determination to never give up carried her through. And to wrap up the episode, we see the rest of the heavy hitters move on to the next round with their own victories. Now we come full circle in... full festival circle. Man, either I'm getting lazy at these introductions to each episode, or the names are just getting lazy. Anyway, this episode has a lot of good parts and highlights the uniqueness of contest battles. There's a lot here, and I don't think we could do it all justice. But let's start off with the first battle, Zoe versus Nando. These two exemplify what a contest battle should be. From using Sing to turn Lopini into a ballerina, to using Psy Wave to create wings on Leafeon for its aerial ace, these two take it to a level that even Dawn questions if she can participate at. In the end, it comes down to a clash between Krikatoon and Leafeon, with Zoli barely moving on to the finals. Now, on to the last battle of this episode that is between Dawn and Jesse. Now, I have to admit, this battle was rushed just so they can get to the finals in the very next episode. And I'm kind of disappointed in this. Even in the canon, this is a semi-finals bout. It should not be glossed over like this, and more so to the fact that Jesse got here. It should have allowed this battle to be more interesting, as she did try harder than the previous Grand Festivals, especially with the writers knowing that Jesse
Gen 5 was on the horizon and that there would be no more contests. Why not cut loose and let her and Don have a full on battle and let Jesse be an actual rival that was a real obstacle to overcome in the semifinals? But no, they made Jesse look like a total fool with Don possessing a very significant lead over her at the end of the five minutes. Now, I'm not going to go into too much because there's still a lot of stuff to cover, but I would like to think that in our version, with everything that Don has been through and Jesse doing more like the classes at Camp Thornberry, she would be far more skilled as a coordinator than in the main series. Not enough to beat Don, but enough so that it doesn't look like Don's second best battle of the Grand Festival happening in the opening round. Giving Don the feeling like she should be in the finals, not just because she got a cheap win over an opponent that was under skilled. Now with that rant over, let's get into our final piece of the Grand Festival, a grand fight for winning. This is the final round between Don and Zoe. This battle is a crucial one. If Don can pull this off, then she will win everything. But Zoe won't be easy. This round starts off with the entrance of the Pokemon that will be used in this battle. For Don, Togekiss and Piplup, followed by Glammeow and Gallade for Zoe. Both appear to be even at first, as neither has seen the secret ace of the other being Togekiss and Gallade. Now the question is, with the changes we've made to Don and Ash in this journey, can Don change fate from her main series counterpart? Well, let's take a look. Don starts off strong with the Norosphere Bubble Bean combo, but Zoe quickly sees through this using Don's own move to highlight her own Pokemon. I think that Don would kick herself because this is one of the first lessons she learned, the Pokemon of the stars, as she watches her points drain. But Don doesn't dwell long, looking to take control of this battle by ordering Togekiss to draw the attention of Zoe by flying up in front of them. She then orders a Hydro Pump from Piplup. In the main canon, Zoe is able to counter this with a Fake Out from Glammeow and cost Don more points. But here, I think Togekiss would get ready to respond with a move that it was charging when Don told it to fly up. Sky Attack. Togekiss at this point would aim for the cat, but Gallade would intercept, blocking Glammeow from the Sky Attack. This does cost Don more points, but it opens up room for a Hydro Pump to connect, finally knocking Zoe down closer to Don in points. The next exchange is between Togekiss and Gallade, when it fails a Vacuum Wave and Togekiss is able to counter with an Air Slash, dropping Zoe even further, evening out the points with Don. The following altercation sees a Signal Beam Iron Tail combo collide with the Whirlpool Orosphere Special, erupting in a sparkling gleam. This again drops both points to even amount. Don then pulls ahead slightly when Safeguard outshines Swords Dance. This pushes Zoe to use Shadow Claw on Togekiss. Don at this point would call for a Sky Attack to counter, but she can see this is a trap as Shadow Claw doesn't have any effect on a normal type. So taking a risk, she orders Piplup in with a counter. Zoe responds with a Psycho Cut from Gallade to intercept, but Togekiss is now free to charge in with an Air Slash at the command of Don. This is able to push Gallade back, helping Piplup as the Shadow Claw fails, costing Zoe more points. She can't believe it. Whatever training Don has done has really helped her claim a new level of understanding of contests. With the gap between Zoe and Don ever widening, in the final attempt, as the last 30 seconds are on the clock, Don combines Peck Attack with a Sky Attack, creating a move of devastating power, while Zoe uses a Psycho Cut Thunderbolt combination to counter. As Glade springs off Glammeow's tail into the air, Don's point dropped ever so slightly. The final attacks collide with an awesome power in midair, creating a blinding light as the Pokemon level out from their battle time being called. And the score goes to the judges to decide. Don and Zoe both have a void in the pit of their stomach. The suspense is eating away at both of them. But in the end, just like in canon, Zoe is declared the winner. Now you're going to ask, why would I still give Zoe this win? Well, this is a very simple answer actually. It came down to Togekiss. Though its moves are elegant and it moves very gracefully, in the end, it had a lack of battle experience that Glammeow and Gallade both have. This means that the ability to respond to their coordinator has a greater bond than Dawn and Togekiss. This sliver of a difference is what cost Dawn here. Had she used any other Pokemon in the combination with Piplub, or polished the dancing strategy that she had developed with Ash, Dawn would have had a whole new routine that Zoe couldn't have made. But her understanding of Togekiss, or the lack thereof, played a key role in her losing this battle, both in canon and in this what if. With this loss, it's another lesson that will be good for Dawn to learn. She thanks Zoe for pushing her to another level. Next time they meet is going to be in the finals again, but the result will be much different. Now at this point, Ash decides that it's finally time for him to bring back some Sinnoh Mons, changing Sceptile and Croconaw out for Abomasnow and Bastiodon. And with that, we can move on to the next part of our journey. With the departure from Lake Valor, Ash, Don, and Brock both have to head north. The next battle facility is known as the Battle Castle. Ash has been thinking about this battle ever since his last frontier battle. Each facility is different in its own way. The structures of the battles, the frontier brains themselves, they're unlike anything he's ever faced. True, Brock says, but you have competed at this level before. Your strongest trait is your ability to adapt in mid-battle to challenges that you've been presented with. You've proved that in the last three. I have no doubt that no matter what the next one has in store for you, you'll figure it out. Then Don puts her 
her two cents in. Ash, you've grown a lot since coming to Sinnoh, and by extension, I have grown as well. There are times in battle I feel like something I've done is a move straight out of your playbook. Like the ice chandelier in the match with Ursula, Brock says. Yeah, the way I made that second one using my opponent's battle style to aid me, that was an Ash catch a move all the way. Yeah, you guys are right. It's not that I'm worried about the battles themselves, I'm more curious than anything. My limits are being pushed with each battle, but where do the limits of me and my Pokemon stop? Will we be pushed too far? Ash, you're doing the one thing that you do the worst, Don says. Oh, and what's that, he asks. Simple, thinking. Stop that, and you're sure to win the next battle, no problem. Okay, okay, Ash says. You're right. Thanks, guys. Hey, it's what we're here for. The friends continue on their way to the battle castle, which ends up taking less than a week. When they finally do arrive, things about this place seem a little off. The aura seems very different than the other battle facilities they have been to up to this point. The group can't quite explain it, but there's something that they can't avoid. Ash's next battle is here, so the group heads inside. Once inside, Dad Bod Scott is as usual waiting for the group. Hey everyone, long time no see. Don, I saw the Grand Festival. You were really great. The performance of a top-notch coordinator. I was right when I said that you were talented. Thanks, Scott, but I was unable to capture the win in the finals. True, but you didn't make it to the finals in your first ever Grand Festival. That's truly an accomplishment worth acknowledgement. I'm sure you'll win the next one. Oh, I will. You can't keep a good coordinator down. And how about you, Ash? Are you ready for today's battle? I am, Scott. It's been just over two weeks since my last win, and I'm more than ready. That's what I like to hear, Ash. Now, there's something you need to know about this facility in particular. Oh, what's that? Well, there are actually two frontier brains here. Wait, what? Two brains in the same facility? Why? Ash asks. Well, that's an interesting topic, you see, Ash. Then, the group hears an ear-piercing cry ring throughout the castle. Derek! Then, they see a man dressed in a very fine garb rush by them in a flash, replying to the call, Coming, Lady Caitlin, as he disappears to the other end of the castle. Who was that, Brock says. Oh, that was Derek, the castle valet, and the personal attendant of Lady Caitlin, one of the brains of this facility. Oh, I see, Brock says. Yeah, she can be a bit of a handful, Scott tells them. Well, she sounds needy, Ash says. Entitled is more like it, Don seconds. Uh, yeah. Well, should we let her know that we're here and that you are ready for your battle, Ash? I guess so, if Her Royal Highness has the time. Oh, don't worry, Ash. You will get a battle. The group then moves into the main hall of the battle castle, where they see the battle arena. Above it, on a literal pedestal, sits a young girl who the one known as Derek is waiting on hand and foot. He serves her tea, but is not the correct temperature, so she spits it out. He brings her food, and when she realizes it's not what she wanted, she throws it at the poor valet. Wow, she's really making a show out of this, Brock says. This girl even puts him off. She's a spoiled brat, Ash says. Um, Ash, you might want to watch what you say. Why, Scott? It's not like she can hear me from up. Then, they look up, and Caitlin is glaring at them. Who are you? And how dare you enter my castle unannounced, Caitlin cries, as if she's offended by their presence. Caitlin, these people are with me. This is Ash, the trainer I told you about. The brain looks him up and down, seemingly unimpressed by the sight before her. She simply waves her hand. I'm not interested. Go battle another facility. You're not worth my time. She then calls for Derek again, who is returning from changing out her meal due to her disapproval of the previous one. Once he enters the room, all he hears is Ash. Why you stuck up little brat, he screams. How dare you look down your nose at us like that. Scott is trying to cool Ash down, but the brain has triggered him and we are now beyond this point. Ash then goes on to call her every name under the sun that he can think of, entitled, spoiled, self-centered. The list goes on and on and on, but Caitlin has spoken. She just ignores him. Ash continues on his screaming tirade, but is then interrupted by Derek. Sir, though Lady Caitlin can be difficult, I will have you cease your disrespectful tone and choice of words toward her, lest I take action. This gets the attention of our heroes. Wait, how could you defend her, Don interjects. She is my employer. I am responsible for defending her honor and making sure she is comfortable at all times. Scott then speaks up. Derek, this is Ash, the challenger I told you about. He is here for his battles. Well, I'm afraid that after the way he handled the situation, he will be leaving empty-handed. You heard, Lady Caitlin. Now, I must ask you to leave. Derek then turns to bring the long-awaited male to his master, leaving everyone speechless. Ash is now seeing red. Scott, this is supposed to be a frontier brain? I expect it better. She's no trainer. She's an incompetent, spoiled child. Uh, Ash, you might want to hold your tongue. Why? It's not like she's going to do anything about it besides demand that we leave. It's not her you have to be worried about, Ash. Oh yeah? Then who? As he looks up to see Derek looking him down with a death gaze. Him, Scott says. Remember when I said there were two brains in the battle castle? Well, Derek is the second one. He then says something to Caitlin, followed by turning to rejoin the others on the battlefield. Ash stares at Derek. The looks in his eyes, they have changed. Is this the strange feeling I was getting? Ash thinks to himself. You there, boy. Boy, Ash questions? You are called Ash. Are you not? Uh, yeah? Well, I will not tolerate the disrespect you have shown, Lady Caitlin. I warned you. Now, you will battle me. Battle you? Yes. This is what you are after, is it not? As Dara 
Eric holds up his battle symbol. Well, if you can beat me, then it's yours. But only if you can beat me. So Scott was right. You are a brain. Okay, what's the stipulations of this battle facility? Well, that's not for me to decide, as this is the residence of Lady Caitlin. It is solely her choice. Ash looks at her as she slowly eats her meal, without a care in the world, giving no attention to Ash or even Derek. Hey, are you going to stop stuffing your face for five seconds to name the terms of our battle? Caitlin just ignores them to continue eating. But Derek, now infuriated with Ash's remarks, snaps at him. How dare you? The only one being disrespectful is you. You will wait until Lady Caitlin is ready to address you. This outburst grabs the attention of everyone in the room, even Caitlin. Well, you have angered Derek, which isn't something easily done. I must say, now you have my attention. Ash, was it? Didn't Scott say you were some sort of high class trainer? Uh, yeah, Scott says. Ash is a champion of... But before Scott can finish, Ash cuts him off to finish the statement. I'm a champion of the Cantal Battle Frontier. Derek is again enraged by Ash's demeanor. As he goes to say something, Caitlin interrupts him, which seems to calm him down a bit. So, a champion we have here. Well, your decorum is unbecoming of a champion, but a champion must be shown with respect, even if that is one virtue he is in need most teaching of. Now Ash is confused. He's unsure of what she just said. Scott sees this, whispering that means she acknowledges who you are, trying not to make it obvious that he is interrupting what Caitlin is saying. I have decided, Caitlin says, the terms of your battle. A three-on-three -three battle. Yes, that sounds nice. Either trainer can make any substitutions, but only one per Pokemon. This will be an all-out battle. No other restrictions will be in place. Finally, Ash thinks we can get started, but Caitlin isn't finished. Though it pains me, Derek, you must inform our challenger of his award. Award, Ash thinks? Derek bows. Yes, my lady. He then turns to Ash. As a champion of the Battle Frontier, here at the Battle Castle, you are granted an award. Normally, when we are challenged, we award castle points to the challengers that they may redeem for advantages if they have enough points. But you will be awarded the champion's advantage. What does that mean, Ash questions? That's simple. You can make one request. Any request, and it will be granted. For instance, if you wanted me to hand over this symbol without a battle, then all you have to do is ask. Or you could change the stipulation of the battle. Ash looks at the castle valet. So anything I want, you say? Yes, anything. Ash thinks about it. Then he turns to Caitlyn. My request is simple. After I beat your servant and claim his battle symbol, you will battle with me so I can claim yours. Interesting, Caitlyn says. Very well. If you can beat Derek, then I will battle you. If, good Ash says, as he smiles. He then turns to Derek. Are you ready? The valet asks. I've never been more ready, Derek. Well then, take your position and prepare to lose. There's that look again, Ash thinks. Does this guy have a different personality or something? Oh well. The two trainers take their positions. Derek choosing his first Pokemon to be Star Raptor. The bird emerges from its ball, and there is a clear difference between it and Ash's regional bird. Not only is it bigger, but it is a different color. Ash gulps. He can tell that this bird has been through some battles as it carries its scars with pride. So Ash, shall we begin? Derek asks with a sinister smirk. Well, Ash got the battle he wanted, and he's not going to turn tail and run now. With no hesitation, he sends in his own Star Raptor. Once his emerges from the ball, the size difference is even more evident, as Derek's towers over his. Well, no matter. We will still take this, Ash thinks to himself, ordering a Steel Wing to start the battle. Derek, unimpressed, orders a double team, avoiding the attack. Really? Is this the best you got, Ash? Not one to back down, Ash orders an aerial ace, which connects this time. But Derek, still calm, orders another double team even though his bird just took damage. Ash feels like this is a trap, and he wants to close out the battle before the double team gets out of hand. So he orders a brave bird, hoping it will end it. It's at this point, Derek changes his move to agility, allowing his Star Raptor to pull off head and outpace Ash's disappearing in the process, forcing the move to fade out before it connects. Wait, what? Where did it go? Then you hear from Derek. Brave Bird, as his bird streaks across the battlefield with the burst of fire connecting with Ashes, sending it careening towards the ground. Star Raptor, pull up, pull up, Ash yells, but nothing. It barrels closer to the ground. With one last call from Ash, it is able to regain its bearings just before it would come in contact with the castle floor. Star Raptor pulls up, barely grazing the battlefield, but it struggles to regain altitude, breathing heavily as it climbs. Derek, however, doesn't wait, ordering another Brave Bird. Ash, urging Star Raptor to get out of the way, orders it to use another aerial ace to counter it. The moves collide with both Pokemon taking damage. Smart, Derek says. If you would have called for Brave Bird, then you would have lost his first match. So, you minimize the damage with Aerial Ace. Ash says nothing, just looking at Star Raptor. It's really winded. Ash decides to recall it, knowing full well if it continues, it won't make it. Giving up so soon, we were just starting to have fun. Ash grits his teeth. Derek has really set him off. His Star Raptor is nearly untouchable. The only way he will be able to beat this is in one shot. In that case, Pikachu, you're up. The Electric Mouse jumps in as it's been 
itching to battle since it started. So Pikachu is your next choice, is it? It is, Ash says. Pikachu was my first Pokemon, so if anyone can beat your bird, it can. We'll see, Ash. As the now calm Derek orders another Brave Bird. Then, something dawns on Ash. Brave Bird is the only move that Derek has called that causes damage. I wonder. Pikachu, counter with Iron Tail. The mouse does so, preventing any damage on its end, but Star Raptor still gets hit with recoil from its move, and now it's starting to lose stamina. I wonder if that's what I think it is, Ash thinks. Pikachu, use Quick Attack, but the increased stats of the bird cause it to miss. I thought so, Ash says. Derek, curious. Oh, what's that? Your only attacking move is Brave Bird, isn't it? Well, you are smarter than you look, Ash. This is indeed true. Well, there are huge flaws in your strategy, Ash says, and I'm surprised someone who is a frontier brain wouldn't see that. Oh, and what is that, Ash? Brave Bird. The recoil will eventually take the health with repeated use. This is true, Derek says. So then, I just have to outlast you. We'll see, the brain rebuttals as he calls for another attack. Pikachu, use Iron Tail, but this one misses and the mouse is hit with the attack, sending it back. However, Star Raptor is now beginning to lose pace, slowing down after the recoil. That's it, Ash says. His confidence is growing. He knows that Derek won't recall his Mon because it'll lose the stat boost it's gotten, and the rest it gets won't be enough to offset the advantage it has. Just one more attack, Ash thinks. But this thought is quickly devastated by the next command Derek gives. Roost. Ash watches as a healing aura washes over Star Raptor. <laughs> It begins to regain its advantage in altitude, as Ash now questions how he will get out of this one. However, there's one thing that Ash has going for him, Roost. It doesn't fully heal the Pokemon, so with enough pressure, then maybe, but there's no time to think. Derek is back at it with the same song. Ash decides he has to go for it. Pikachu, Volt Tackle. The electric mouse charges up, hurtling down the battlefield, but it misses, catching another Brave Bird. This time though, it was a full attack unguarded. Star Raptor does take damage from the recoil, but Pikachu is down. That attack was more powerful than Nash realized. He calls to his partner. Hey buddy, are you okay? The electric mouse shuffles to its feet, wondering if anyone got the name of that bus that just hit it. Derek, however, isn't going to give it any chance to recover as his predator is back on the prowl once more. Pikachu Ash calls. The mouse responds, shaking off the cobwebs. Star Raptor is nearly on top of it. Then Ash has an idea. Pikachu, use your tail like a spring to bounce towards Star Raptor. The mouse does. Then at the command of Ash, it charges a volt tackle that actually hits the bird, forcing it into the ground. No, Derek thinks. Star Raptor, stand up. Use Roost. The bird struggles up, but Ash knows this is his only opportunity, ordering another Volt Tackle as the bird begins to heal. They then disappear in a cloud of smoke as Pikachu lands with its assault. The tension is so thick that you can cut it with a knife as they wait to see if any of their Pokemon are still standing. Finally, a gust of wind blows as Star Raptor cries. <coughs> But to the surprise of everyone, only one wing is working. That powerful gust came from one wing, Ash thinks. Wow. Derek orders his bird back into the sky, but it can't take off with the bad wing. The Volt Tackle hit at such an awkward angle that Star Raptor took the brunt of the attack on its wing. Reluctantly, Derek must recall it, though he does not declare it unfit for battle, which is strange, Ash thinks. Well, aren't you full of surprises, Derek says. That was impressive. I don't think anyone's ever grounded my Star Raptor before. Oh well, I'll save it for later. But now, things get interesting, as the tone of Derek's voice shifts with a sinister grin. It's like Ash is looking at a whole different person. That strange feeling is back. The calm demeanor that he had with Star Raptor has now been replaced by one of malice. Almost like it's hate. Pay for your disrespect, you showed Lady Caitlyn. Houndoom! Go! Derek says in a disturbing voice. Ash looks to Pikachu. You still okay to battle, buddy? It nods, not giving any hint of fear of its next opponent. In the stands, Ash's friend look on, questioning the sudden tone shift while Caitlyn thinks to herself that things are finally beginning to pick up. Wanting to keep some distance until he knows what he's dealing with, Ash calls for a thunderbolt. Derek, however, isn't having it, ordering a thunderfang to cancel out the attack. Then, without missing a beat, he orders Houndoom to use Dark Pulse and spread it across the battlefield. Ash tells Pikachu to run, but the places it can go quickly disappear. The mouse just watches as the move readies to consume it. But Ash orders an iron tail on the ground to break the path of the move. This actually works, but through the veil of the attack, Pikachu is caught in the fangs of Houndoom. What? It was, yes, a distraction, as Derek orders a toxic from Houndoom. The move floods Pikachu. The mouse can't escape as its tail is in the firm grip of Houndoom. It's like Derek wants to hurt Pikachu. Ash orders a thunderbolt. While this is successful in breaking the two apart, the real damage has been done. Pikachu is now on the clock, and Ash knows it. Wow, Derek's battle 
Kyle's styles completely change. His approach was much more deceitful, Ash thinks. Almost evil. Pikachu is still able to battle, and Ash decides to keep it in for the time being. Ash tells Pikachu to use Quick Attack so he can outspeed and get some much needed damage, but Derek uses Dark Pulse again, creating another shield to hide behind. Pikachu, stop Ash commands. Wait. The mouse does, but this is what Derek wanted, as Ash can hear him laughing maniacally, commanding a nasty plot from behind the wall of darkness. Then, another command. Dark Pulse. This time, it comes in a more concentrated burst. Ash knows that this is where Houndoom is. Pikachu is burning precious seconds waiting for an order from its trainer. Finally, Ash orders a Volt Tackle and a charge into the oncoming attack. Pikachu rushes in, but it is blind, only having the direction that the attack came from. But Houndoom was ready at the command of a Thunderfang, emerging from its hiding spot. The Devil Dog chomps down on Pikachu's tail once more as it flies through the air. Ash just smiles. I thought you might try something like that. Pikachu, use Iron Tail and curl up. The mouse does so, pulling Houndoom in as the two start to roll. Remember, the Volt Tackle is still active, and the momentum of the roll is in Pikachu's advantage as Houndoom hits the wall with the Volt Tackle connecting, ending the battle in one motion. The sinister look in Derek's eyes fade back to the calm of the previous battle as he recalls Houndoom. Well, Ash, that was impressive to use the momentum of the roll like that. I must say you're an oddity. While above, Caitlyn is thinking the same thing. Ash looks at Pikachu. The poison is beginning to have a noticeable side effect, and even though it won the last battle, the little mouse has sustained a ton of damage in the process. Pikachu, come back, Ash says. So it returns to the side of its trainer. Derek finds himself in an awkward position, a star raptor that can't fly, and one full health Pokemon. The choices, the choices. But Ash is in the same boat. Pikachu won't last another battle, and his bird gave all it had just to get in damage. Well, I guess it's my turn, Derek announces, sending in his final Pokemon, Gallade. The look in Derek's eyes change once again. This look is intense. It's like the look of a warrior that has seen many battles, one whose convictions will carry him through. Ash, this is my best Pokemon. The true test of your skill begins here. If you wish to earn my symbol, then you must best my Gallade. Ash can see this Mon is clearly far better trained than the previous Pokemon. Ash decides that he needs to hit with Star Raptor and uses type advantage as much as possible. As the bird emerges, it's obvious that the rest wasn't enough as it's still breathing heavily. I know you're tired, but I really need you here, Ash thinks. He orders the first strike with an aerial ace. Star Raptor rushes in, pushing through its fatigue. However, Derek, with no waver in his eyes, simply utters protect. A swirl of psychic energy envelops Gallade, preventing Star Raptor from landing its move. Darn, Ash thinks. This brain definitely battles differently. His personalities change to match his Pokemon. Ash, Derek calls. Are you giving up? No. Just thinking, he says. Well, if you don't make a move, then I will, as Derek calls for a close comment. What? Staraptor, fly up, Ash commands. It does so, but Gallade is faster due to the bird's fatigue, and the move connects. A flurry of punches and kicks envelop the predatory bird as it cries in pain. No, Ash thinks. It's too close to get off any type of flying type attacks. Then, it hits him. Staraptor, counter with close combat. The bird regains its bearing, launching its own assault on Gallade. This does force the fighting type back, inflicting some damage to it. Unfortunately, Star Raptor has reached its limit, landing as it can no longer sustain flight. Are you okay? Ash calls to his emo bird, but it's unresponsive, breathing heavily just to stay conscious. Well, I guess it's time to end this, as you have no more recall. Gallade, you psycho cut. The warrior Mon extends its arms as the blade begins to glow with psychic energy. Gallade takes its stance, readying its attack. Go, dare command. Ash has a split second to make a decision. Call for an attack, or stop, he yells. I declare Star Raptor unfit for battle, as he recalls it. Well, this boy does have a sense of honor after all, Derek thinks. Meanwhile, Caitlyn and the rest look on without saying anything. Well, I guess that evens up the Pokemon left, Derek says. Yes it does, Ash replies, as he looks to Pikachu. It's taking too much damage to continue at this point. If it goes in, it'll lose as well. Ash makes the decision that he has to go with the new choice. But who? Monferno is outclassed here. Spiritomb still won't listen, which Ash still needs to figure out if he wishes to have any chance at beating his rivals. And he doesn't think Obama's has the experience necessary to best Gallade in a battle. That only leaves one choice on his current team, Bastiodon. Though it is at a type disadvantage, it has the defense to contend with the attack of this powerful Gallade. Ash raises the ball as Caitlyn and Derek curiously look on, wondering what Ash's next choice will be. Then he calls it, surprising everyone. Bastiodon, I choose you. As the Iron Fossil emerges in its defensive brilliance, Derek is puzzled by this choice. Why would Ash choose a Pokemon with a four times weakness to his? I hope you're ready, Derek. This battle is far from over. The look 
in Derek's eyes say it all. His resolve won't be bested by this boy, and he won't let this choice change that. Well, Ash, you have guts. I'll give you that. But that won't be enough for you to carry this battle, as he orders another close combat in an attempt to end it now. But Ash just smiles, calling for ancient power. The boulders begin to levitate around Bastiodon, but they don't move, and Gallade is forced to break his way through them, with the attack losing power before it can connect with Bastiodon forcing it to retreat. Brock looks on from the stance. No way. Ash didn't. Yep, he did, Don says. What? Scott questions. That move is a variation of a move that Ash's rival used when he had a full 6 on 6 battle at Lake Acuity. Really? Scott remarks. Yes, Brock says. The idea is to use it as a shield to protect against attacks. Well, this is interesting, Scott remarks, as he turns back to the battle. Caitlin is still watching, now more involved than ever. Well, Ash, your defense is top notch. Not bad, since that's the first time I've tried that with Bastiodon. On Ash says, causing a look of shock across the brain's face. Well, you are full of surprises, Ash, but so am I. Gallade, swords dance. The gallant Mon begins to glow. Great, Ash thinks. This just got harder. Well, I can match you too. Bastiodon, iron defense. Both Mons glow with their stat change, readying their next exchange. Ash orders another ancient power, readying it as a shield, but Derek has something else in mind, ordering a psycho cut to be fired in succession to eat through the stones as it rushes in. This gives Gallade the opening needed to hit with a close comet as it speeds far out classes Bastiodons. Though the attack hits, it's like nothing happened. Bastiodon didn't even flinch. You like that, Ash says? Bastiodon took the move on its thickest part of its body. Its face. The literal shield, Ash smirks. Wait, you wanted Gallade to get in close, Derek says? Yep, there's no way we would be able to hit it if we went after it. As Ash calls for a flash cannon, Gallade is too close to dodge, taking the attack at point blank. This isn't enough to put it down, but it is enough to cause some serious damage, as Gallade retreats, smoldering a little from the black. See, Derek, you're not the only one that could change his battle style mid-battle, Ash taunts. So, he's not going to attack. He's just going to wait for me to attack, then counter. This prompts a change in Derek's approach. Gallade, use close combat on the ground. It does so, sending a barrage of stones flying toward Bastiodon. Wait, Ash thinks. Why would he? Then it becomes clear, as Gallade uses the stones as cover to get in close again. This time, Ash doesn't have his shield up, so he has to go on the attack, ordering Flash Cannon to break away the stones hurtling toward him. As the light envelops the area, Ash loses the sight of Gallade. Before he knows it, the Mon is above Bastiodon in the air, with Derek given the order for another close combat. No, Ash thinks. This isn't good. Bastiodon's weakest point. With little room for air and little time, Ash calls for another iron defense to minimize the damage. Gallade pummels on the back of Bastiodon as it cries in pain. Once the assault subsides, Gallade returns to its side of the field. Ash looks to his Pokemon. Things don't bode well for the young trainer. It's down and unresponsive to Ash's calls. Well, I guess this is it for this battle. Though your Bastiodon fought well, I'm afraid in the end, it didn't have the defense you were hoping for. The ref prepares to call the battle when they are stopped by Caitlyn. Wait, she demands. It's not over. But Lady Caitlyn, it's clear that this Pokemon can't continue. Caitlyn just glares at Derek as if to say, how dare you question me? And with what seems to be some sort of glow in her eyes for a brief second. Ash sees it, but thinks nothing of it, more concerned with this Pokemon. But as Derek is left in a stumped manner, Bastiodon begins to stir, slowly bringing itself back to its feet. Wait, what? Derek says, shifting his attention back to the battle. Well, it seems Caitlyn was right after all, Ash says. It's not possible. That was a clean hit. There's no way. Actually, there is. But it was a minimal chance of success from the very beginning, Ash says. Well, what is it? Derek demands to know. The look in his eyes turning to frustration. That's simple, Ash says. It's ability. Sturdy. It prevents moves that would cause a one-hit KO. Sturdy? Well, you really are grasping at straws if you're using desperate tactics like that. This is true. Ash won't deny the fact that Bastiodon survived that last attack on pure chance. Ash looks to his mind. He knows the next exchange will be the last. Ash thinks, how can we make this end in our favor? But before you can decide, Derek is right back to the battle, ordering Gallade to use another close combat on the ground. The boulders fly through the air, giving Ash little time to respond. The last time this happened, Flash Cannon provided cover for Gallade. Ash can't do that again, or they'll lose. But they need defense. Then it hits Ash. Bastiodon, use Ice Beam on the rocks. The Iron Defender charges what energy it has left, firing the beam, catching both Gallade and Derek off guard. The move freezes the rocks in midair, creating a wall of ice and rocks between Bastiodon and its opponent. Unfortunately, it doesn't have enough time to pull back, so it must use its charged close combat on the wall. But with the attack increase it's endured, it is able to break through the wall, losing power in the process. As the close combat lands, Ash calls for another flash cannon that catches Gallade. As it connects with Bastiodon, erupting in an explosion as the two moves collide. Once the smoke clears, both Pokemon stare at each other, 
as do their trainers. I've never had someone push me this far in battle, Derek thinks to himself as he reflects on the experience he and his Pokemon have had today as both Pokemon faint out of exhaustion, shocking both of their trainers. Oh man, I thought we had that one, Ash says as he recalls his mom. Derek, silent, recalls Gallade. Ash looks at Pikachu. The poison is still in effect, but it hasn't taken any new damage as the lack of movement has prevented its further spread. Well, buddy, are you ready, Ash says. Pikachu nods. It jumps back into the battlefield, but still showing the effects of the previous battle. Battles, but there is no response from Derek. He looks on in puzzlement. He knows that Derek still has Star Raptor left to battle. Sure, it can't fly, but it can still battle. Ash gets ready to ask Derek if he's ready, but he finally speaks. I can see, the brain says, shocking everyone in attendance. My last Pokemon can't fly, and as it can't, the only attacking move I have can't be performed. The ref then calls it, giving Ash the win. Derek then walks to Ash's side. Ash, in the beginning, I thought you were someone who possessed no virtues or decorum, but throughout the strain of this battle, you showed me you possess them in abundance. Though your manners could still use some work, I present you with the honor symbol to show proof of your wins against one of the two frontier brains of the battle castle. Ash takes the symbol, thanking Derek for the battle. He wasn't sure if he would win with the way the tide of the battle kept changing along with his personality. I do apologize for that. When I battle, it brings out different sides of me, sometimes more vicious sides of me, but no matter, you still pulled through. Ash celebrates his win with Pikachu. Yes, our fourth symbol. Everyone approaches Ash. Great job, Scott says. Thanks. With a day's rest, we'll be back tomorrow for our second battle. I don't think so, Caitlin's voice rings out from above. Wait, you said I could name my any prize I wanted. And I said if I won, I would battle you as well. True, Ash, that was your prize. And I did agree to those terms. And you will get your battle. Now. What? Now? Yes, now, Caitlin says. The agreement was that if you win, then we battle after you win, which is now. But Lady Caitlin, Ash and his Pokemon need time to rest. The battle they just went through has left his team very worn. How dare you question me, Derek? Are you opposing my decision? No, my lady. Good. And that's all we have for part six of What If Ash Won the Sinnoh League. So what do you guys think about this part? How did you feel about the battle between Don and Zoe at the Grand Festival? Do you think that I'm right in the fact that Don still should have lost here? Or do you think that Zoe should have been the one who lost? Let me know in the comments down below. Also, how do you feel about the battle between Derek and Ash? I know that this battle was a little bit different than the previous three in the last part, but I really wanted to stress the difference between the Frontier Brains. Not all of them are the same. And with Derek, I really wanted to stress the fact that he does have sort of a multiple personality going on and it was reflected in his battles. So how did you feel about the way I wrote that? Do you feel I could have done better? Do you feel like I could have done worse? Let me know in the comments down below. And of course, how do you feel about Caitlyn and her stuck up attitude? And do you think Ash is going to be able to beat her when she and him battle in the next episode? But that's all I have for you guys today. So without further ado, let's lead out with the patrons. Silver Heart Soul, thank you very much. Robert, thank you. Vegito Gaming 78, thank you very much. Andrew McCartney, thank you. Patricio Gonzalez, thank you. Holoziviv, thank you. Julian Rodriguez, thank you. Ruben Watson, thank you. Lord Explosion Murder, thank you. Flyer 943, thank you. Jacob Perry, thank you. Tavern Landlord, thank you. K McKnight, thank you. Kevin A. Train, thank you. Make your YAG, thank you. And Luke Franciscos, thank you all for your support. And I will see you in the next video.